I have finished doing more than half of the of the stucco removal on the house and I thought it would be a good idea to actually show a complete section of this is how I get the stucco off because I've come up with a system that works fairly well it's not great uh, it's definitely not the worst that I've seen especially on the YouTubes and maybe it'll help you if you need to do your stucco removal so the first thing to be very careful of is make sure you have your ear protection uh, these are not actually rated as ear protection but they do work I've got my brand new sunglasses 99% UV A, B and C protection but they're also impact rated uh, these are the first time I'm testing these ones they have an extra extra gasket here that I'm hoping will keep the chunks out of and then you're dealing with concrete especially when you get up to the top even on a windy day it's going to be all up in my face so make sure you have at least a half mask proper respirator the first step that i do is remove all the nails from the path i want to cut through one of the things that my helper who is now holding the camera was doing was saying oh i'm, I'm going to stop and i'm going to collect all the nails don't collect the nails Drop the nails and if you have to pick them up with a magnet broom after Magnet broom is like 20, 25 bucks and it will save you hours. This takes long enough as it is. If you can save yourself an hour or three on pulling nails, definitely do it. So I'm pretty clear. I'm gonna to wanna to get the one drywall screw at the top there. And then I will come along, ta-da, tools magically appeared with my seven inch concrete saw here and my four and a half inch concrete saw here. I wanted to get them both because this one, you'll see when I get up to the top, this guy, I run this guy first, when I get to the top there will be a lot left over that it couldn't cut and it can't get all the way down to the bottom because of this lip that I have. You might not have that problem, you might be able to get away with it. So I use this one at the bottom and the top, I've gotten this one all the way cut through and then at the top because this tool is still a round tool and it has radius and you can't get all the way into the corner. I come along with this hammer. Make sure you've got one that's got the straighter claws. If they're, if it's a hammer that's made for more pulling nails, you won't be able to get at it. This will let me get right up at the top. I have to chip out the last little bit and then come along with some wire cutters to cut the wire mesh that's actually holding all of this stuff on. So now that that's all described, I can grab my ladder and actually go do it. So you can see at the bottom here, it didn't get all the way through. I've got about this much that's not cut all the way through. And the same at the top as well. And then the last part, the grinder managed to get that one and that one, but not this one at the top. And if you don't get all of them cut, you're going to have a heck of a time getting stuff disconnected. Don't Dutch angle me. <laughs> Jeez. No, that's bad. If you're working over anything that's not a sidewalk, concrete, really easy to scrape with a shovel and clean up, really think about getting some, some either drop cloth. I'm using some poly barrier here because I don't want to be going through my garden dirt trying to pick out every little scrap by hand and there will be a lot of scraps. For the actual removal, I like this wrecking bar. Crowbars are a little bit more awkward because they're more hooked. I like to have a flat get in at it from the side. And also when you're doing this, try to catch it with your wheelbarrow because that will save you a lot of time cleaning up. So one thing you might notice is I'm kind of breaking it more than peeling it. That's because I'm going in and lifting up. If you want to try to peel it into one bigger piece, start from the top down. I can't really do that with this one because of the window here. But then when you get under it, roll it up this way. And you get more of a peeling action than the breaking action. We're kind of lucky here in that this is all the worst case scenarios that you might run into. I've got two layers 
of this wire mess and I'm against the window. I'm going to switch over to the other side. There's two reasons working beside a window is really tough. One is you can't get in at it from the side. And two, they put a lot more nails in along right beside a window to hold the mess in. So if I can get at it from the other side, this should go a bit easier. But you can see how much stuff I'm catching in the wheelbarrow here. All of that is stuff I don't have to pick up by hand. So that's about as bad and as difficult as this stuff gets. If you're not working beside a window, you don't have that extra row of nails to deal with. You can get a better angle at it coming from the side. You can start at the top and work your way down. The goal is really to try to get as much of it to, to peel and roll down. I'll try to get some example of that when we start on the other side where there's less window exposure. But believe it or not, this is about the easiest way that I've been able to come up with to get this off the wall. Now you've caught a wheelbarrow full of these scraps and chunks and whatnot. Do not just, if you've rented a bin, go ahead, dump it in your bin. If you're putting it in a trailer or in your truck or in my case, in my van, do not just dump it into the van because you'll have to hand bomb it back out after. Get yourself some of those real thick, heavy duty, like, it's heavy contractor garbage bag and put it in the garbage bag. Trust me, if you're doing this self, you're saving more than enough money to be able to pony up a little bit extra for the heavier bags. With the biggest ones you can find because then you can put it over top of the end of the wheelbarrow. and then just dump it into the bag. Check and make sure the underside is still under before you pull the bag and the door away. Now when I get to the dump, this will be easy to haul out. Only cheap out so much. Don't start with so. Thank you. I have finished getting all my big cuts in with this guy. I uh, don't know if I pointed it out before, but make sure you get to, make sure you get concrete blades, for whatever tools you're using, because just regular blades are no good. But in an effort to make things go faster, I do all my cuts with this one tool. Now I'm going to go along all the cuts with this tool at the top and the bottom, like I showed before and then I'll go along with the hammer and the trimmers and get all the last little bits at the top. So it's all of one thing, all of the next thing, all of the next thing, and then we can start peeling off more panels. That other clip that we got of me peeling off a bit was not the best clip because it was one of the most difficult pieces on this whole house to peel. So we're gonna try to hopefully do a better job with this one. I'm working from the side I'd like to work from. I've got more space to work from. I don't have any extra nails for the windows. This should, fingers crossed, should come off a lot easier. You can start to see what I mean when I say peel it off the wall instead of break it off the wall. A solid piece coming off. When I get it to about here, I get off the ladder, and especially when I'm obstructed by a wheel well, I want to try and guide it by hand into the wheelbarrow because these things have a tendency when they hit the wheelbarrow to tip over. And that's just kind of a chore to deal with.
And that's why I tried to develop a system where I can get these off pretty much in one piece. Way faster. Today is going to be sucker removal day, so I am buying myself a new toy, small battery operated handheld grinder, and we'll start by getting that set up and ready. Hey, unboxing. I'll just kind of guess this side and we'll see how that goes. Alright, that's an easy adjustable. Brand new rigid blade for masonry. Labels out. Lock button. And torque tool. There's that. And then battery. Bonk. Seems to work. Mmm, that nice new ozone smell too. So we have some help from Cosigner today. I'm going to zip a line along the bottom because the radius of this thing will not let me get all the way down to the bottom on a cut. So first, I'll do a little bit of a test cut to see how far down I can get without hitting this metal flashing here. And then at that height, I'll go across. We got to make sure our ears are in and I got to make sure my mask is on because this stuff is not good for you. So if Cosigner wants to communicate, He's got to make it clear because I can't hear him now. <laughs> and got to get my eye protection. All right. <laughs> Dead battery. I need to be about this high up. Man, that is that is thick. So this will just barely hit depth. When this grinds down. It's not going to get all the way through. So we'll do what we can with this one for today. And then I'll probably go and buy a bigger saw and a bigger saw blade. It sprays that way. It's what? It sprays that way. Yeah, okay, I'll get out of the way. Here, give me the nail pull. Santa, uh, screwdriver. Yeah, we need the uh, we need the bars. I kind of don't want to do this in the rain, so I might say shove that up against the wall. I'm going to call that here for now. I'm going to do some shopping, spend some money, hopefully get a tool that will help it uh, cut through a bit faster. We would at least have two tools. Yeah. That would go faster. Yeah. Round two. 
bigger tool, bigger blade, hopefully less rain. It is kind of a bummer that no one makes proper masonry blades for the six and a half inch circular saws. It's nice and snug in there. They're always super duper tight when they come from the factory. Okay, it is not a reverse thread. Seven inch blade get. Oh, this button is very stiff. Put that away so we know where it is. We are much less rain now, so we're gonna give this another go. We're gonna get all our PPE again. Okay, we're also gonna make sure we set our depth intelligently too. Close to hitting the wood, maybe just barely scraping the wood. Not quite deep enough. Okay, I think we're pretty good for depth. So let's see what we can do to get some speed. Well, I think it's faster. One thing it definitely is, is heavier. So I'm thinking those sparks are telling me that I'm mostly getting down to this flashing back here. So I think I have good depth finally. I can't quite just like slam through it as much as I'd hope, but I mean, it is doing the job. And I don't have to do the many multiple passes like I did with the, uh, the grinder. That's what I can do. So I'm gonna have to pull some nails to make a path for the cutter up there. I'm wondering if it wouldn't be better to like pop these soffits off and um, just try to cut all the way up to the top. And that would save cutting this whole line. I just have to cut the line straight up. Now let's see if I can just yank this all down at once. Nope, it's going to break where the nails are. Those nails are surprisingly strong right there. Okay, well, that's the soffits out. <laughs> so the hope here is that I'll be able to uh, cut swathy chunks out of this and kind of roll it off the wall into the wheelbarrow there for disposal. Don't be locked, yay. And then we'll, we'll say we'll come up around here and then we'll come up around here after. So we'll get two sets of nail poles all at the same time. Okay, so we're gonna come along there and we're gonna cut along there too. We'll have to use both tools. Oh, I gotta get my glasses off before I get my breather on. So that's about as much as we can get with that one. Finish off this cut, top and bottom. I just have to kind of bash that in. So we'll start up on this corner too. Oh, I almost made it line up. Now I'll have to cut that last little bit over there and then we can see if, see if I can peel these off on my own. Okay. 
Alright, I'm gonna need to uh, get some new cutters for that. There. That worked about as well as I could have hoped. Well, that kind of sucked. Okay, well that was scary. And then this can go to the van. Not bad. Yes, two in a row. So I think what I might do is use my saw up along this side after I get the rest of the soffits off. So I'll have to pull some nails, but if I use it along this side, I can still get it on the flat because it's blade right. And then I can peel this piece off. I've got to try to come up with some sort of not insane way to get these shades off. First try, check that out. I think that, that's a perfect fit. I got that 3 8 perfect. I'm gonna try to undo this and like hold it overhead and slowly tip it off this way, but I'll need somewhere to, to be able to stash the impact driver quickly. Now, unless I'm missing, no, I'm not missing anything. There's just one of these left. Okay, that's not too heavy. Okay, this is definitely thicker. This is going to be more difficult. Perfect. Well, that is one well destuccoed. 